welcome back to The Splash. I'm Maddie Mushin. We're giving you the news, events, and featured guests for the West Bloomfield community that is showing us what a great place West Bloomfield is and why it's the place to be. We are going to be doing live shows. It's now from 9.30 until 10 o'clock every single day, the daily live show. This is going to be The Splash Live, our new format after our 200th episode that we tweaked a little bit. That way we can highlight the West Bloomfield businesses, community, and all the events that are going on here and giving you those updates every day. We're gonna start off with those feet, with those nomination codes that we are doing. Um, we have our QR code on our screen right now. These are for the person of the week. So we have done this in the past, but this time we're making it a little bit more interactive so you can scan that QR code and fill out the Google form. These are going to be people that you think we should be highlighting on our show interviewing and putting a package together, whether they're educators, students that you know that are making a difference in the community, local businesses that have um, an event coming up that are, is either something that is giving back to the community or making West Bloomfield a better place. So you can just scan that QR code, fill out the Google form, and give those nominations to us, and we will go through them and highlight those people that you think should be the person of the week here on the Splash Live. And we're going to go into our events now. There's a lot of things happening with the upcoming holiday season coming up, obviously. Thanksgiving is this weekend uh, on Thursday, a very fun time, and the Christmas, Hanukkah seasons are also coming up. The first event that we have is actually going to be this Friday. So this is a West Bloomfield Parks event. It is the Opt Out Scavenger Hunt. So this is an event where it is kind of an alternative to what you would have done maybe the day after Thanksgiving, hanging out with your family and friends inside, watching some football games, uh, watching some sporting events, or going out to the malls and the stores to Black Friday shop. This is going to be an outside event. It is the scavenger hunt. So West Bloomfield Parks is going to be having some places and um, they will be sending you to go take pictures and then submit to the West Bloomfield Parks um, staff there. And the winner will get a free admission to uh, any of their parks or their amenities for four. So that is the West Bloomfield opt out scavenger hunt. The next event is also a West Bloomfield Parks event. This is the Letters to Santa. It is gonna be December 4th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. But that registration is open now and they have certain times that you can go and register to have your picture taken um, and you will have the registered to deadline is um, November 30th. So you wanna make sure that you can go and meet Santa, give him your letter and take your family picture. The cost is $15 per family if you're a resident here in West Bloomfield and it is $17 if you're a non-resident. So go on their website, find a time that works for you and your loved ones and go register there. Again, the deadline to register is the 30th. So coming up pretty quickly. Another couple of our events that are ongoing, uh, the Farber Center that we highlighted uh, earlier this week, their Soul Studio is up and they're doing their holiday market. So if you haven't done any of your holiday shopping yet, you can get uh, the, those Thanksgiving gifts. You can go and get your Hanukkah or your Christmas gifts there in the Soul Studio. They have some jewelry, some mugs, um, everything that is being sold there is made by their local artists that they have and they also have an option to do those customized, uh, customizable spe speakers, the sneakers that they have by their artists there. Um, so a fun little personalized gift. Everyone loves a personalized gift for the holidays. So make sure you stop by there and go get it. The Toys for Tots event is also something that we have featured here on the Splash. This is through the fire department, through the Marine Corps Toys for Tots event. And we talked with Chris Mars about the drive there at all the fire stations here in West Bloomfield. You can go drop off a toy or a check uh, during their normal business hours. And these are toys for infants, toddlers, um, mostly those teenagers. They said that they don't normally get gifts for those teenagers, whether there's games, you know, remote control cars, um, purses, makeup kits, anything that those teenagers would like to get for their holiday season. Um, making sure that they get those gifts and are able to celebrate the holidays with the pandemic. It has been very hard on families to um, 
maybe have the money and have that extra cash to get these toys. So if you can make a donation, if you're out holiday shopping, um, if you go to the Farber Center, uh, Soul Studio, or if you're out Black Friday shopping on Friday, make sure you keep those kids in mind. And if you can't um, go out and get a gift, they also are taking checks, so they're making out to the Marine Corps Toys for Tots Foundation. You can drop those checks off as you would any toy. And if you have a featured event that you want us to highlight here on the Splash Live, you can send us a message on social media, um, and you can also call in and make sure that we have those featured events. Uh, we can highlight there on the Splash Live. And one of our features here is we're going to be having guests daily. So we are uh, invited, we invited Kathy Russ here and she is going to be joining us. Kathy is the library director for the West Bloomfield Township Public Library. She has been the library director since December of 2020. Um, and so she has gone through the pandemic, made sure that the library is a safe place for you to rent out books and read and learn here in West Bloomfield. Thank you so much for joining us, Kathy. Hi, Maddie. Thanks for having me. So tell us a little bit about the events and some of the new programming that you have um, with the library, whether that's holiday things that you were having with the holiday season coming up or some of those virtual events that you're having here at the library. Sure. So we have um, a lot going on in um, for the rest of November and, and then in December for adults, for teens, for children of all ages. Um, for adults, we've got um, some really good arts type programs coming up. We have an art and literature program on December 1st. Um, and then we've got a couple of book talks coming up. Um, one is on the book Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. He wrote A Man Called Ove, which was really popular with book groups. Um, and that's on December 9th. And if you miss it on the 9th, you can come on the 10th. And then um, for teens, we've got um, craft kits on the go, which um, is uh, something that we we piloted this year for adults, for teens and for children, um, that um, we have these kits that are, you know, make and take things. So um, they're craft supplies and they people come to the library, they pick them up, they can do them at home or at their friend's house or wherever they want. So it's a little way to um, experience the library, but you don't have to be in the library. So we have those available for teens starting December 6th. And then for children, we've got our virtual story times for all ages. We have tots, we have preschoolers, we have um, for the young children, for families. And those story times also come with the kits that people can come and pick up and then experience the story time at home and then make the craft at home too. The way that they would do if they were able to come to the library and do all that live. And then I believe that you guys are also doing a film discussion series. So um, would you tell us a little bit about, more about that? Obviously it's not books and reading, but something a little bit more fun with people going and maybe watching some movies this holiday season. Sure, yes. Um, I, I really enjoy the film series. Um, we have Dr. Tara Hayes and she facilitates that and she does her research. Um, the December film is called The Father and it's with Olivia Coleman and Anthony Hopkins about a daughter dealing with her father's um, Alzheimer's and dementia. So, you know, you have some powerhouse actors um, we don't show the film, we ask the people to watch the film on their own, and then Dr. Hayes facilitates a Zoom discussion about the film, and she you know, gets into the acting, gets into the themes, gets into the staging, the lighting, the direction, all of it. So if you're a film buff, it's a really great program for you to try, and it is free, um, and it's um, West Bloomfield residents and residents of Kego, Harbor, Orchard Lake, and Sylvan Lake. Um, are, are welcome to attend. Um, we try to have these programs because they're so popular, limited to residents and members of our contract communities. And with the holiday season coming up, people are maybe gonna wanna rent out a book to take on their trips or, you know, read during those holiday time that they have off maybe from work. Do you guys have any particular book recommendations or anything that you have um, kind of highlighted there at the library? One thing that I really like about West Bloomfield Library, um, I, I have, since I've started here a year ago, I've been so impressed with the way the staff features the collections. So while we have recommendations, it's, it's almost like a bookstore feel that you could walk in and we have displays, like right now we have um, towards the front of the library when you walk in, we have, um, 
Thanksgiving movies, we have holiday movies, we have mysteries and thriller displays, we have a book group book display. So if you're looking for something for your book group to try, you can check out any of the titles there. We also have librarians available. So if you don't see anything you like on our displays, um, maybe we're not featuring that topic this time out and you just need some personalized recommendations. The librarians are fantastic about finding a book that's just right for you. So while I have personal recommendations if um you know i think we have something for everybody so come on in and check it all out if you don't see what you're looking for nothing really strikes you talk to one of us and we'll be happy to set you up with the best book and kathy as the library director i'm sure you have some great recommendations so i don't know if you're reading anything right now you're a busy woman but if you have those recommendations for us we'd love to hear them Yes, actually, I just finished. Oh, it was it was fantastic. Um, it was a book called The Matzo Ball. It's by um, Jean Meltzer. It's her debut book. Um, I'm not usually a romance reader, but it's sort of like reading a romantic comedy movie. Um, you know, one of those those feel good ones that you close the book and you just go, oh, that was so nice. Um, and it's her first novel, but she was a writer for television. She won daytime Emmys and all that. Um, but it's, you know, this woman named Rachel, and she lives in New York City, but she's dealing with chronic fatigue syndrome. But she's also got a secret, and that is she's um, she's a nice Jewish girl, but she writes, she's a best-selling author of Christmas romances, and she loves Christmas, but she keeps this hidden from her friends and her family. So she meets, of course, um, her her childhood sweetheart comes back into town because he's planning this big event called the matzo ball and um they they hate each other but then they love each other and it was just uh, i interviewed this author um for a, a program and um she is she's a joy she's delightful and the book is delightful too so if you're looking for a really nice holiday romance i recommend the matzo ball yeah, perfect for this Christmas time. I'm currently reading The Song of Achilles. I haven't gotten, I'm about halfway through, so I'm gonna have to read it while I travel uh, to go see my family for the holiday season. And if someone wants to go either this week or more towards Christmas um, to go rent out a book or even a movie there at the library, what are the hours and what was the, um, the process for that? You know, do they need to get a library card beforehand? Sure. So if, if, um, if you don't already have a library card, you can actually register online and then we do the work before you come in and then you can come in and pick up your card or you can just walk in and register for a card. That's fine. What we ask is that you bring your driver's license or state ID card. Um, so, you know, just proof of identity proof of residency. Um, if you know if you already have a library card, then you just come on in. Our hours are the same for the holidays. Um, we're open Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and then Friday and Saturday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and then on Sundays from 12 until 6 p.m. and that's at the main branch. The West Acres branch has similar hours except on Sundays they close at 5. Thank you. And then um, if people want to go and register for those virtual events, would they do that? Can they do that in person or is it all on your website there at the West Bloomfield Township Library? So they can register. That's a really great question, actually, because I think we're so used to asking people to go to the website to register. But if you come into the library and you're interested in a program, just talk to one of the librarians and we can get you registered at one of the desks. But if you're home or on the go and you think, oh, I want to register for that program, you can do it from your computer, from your device, your phone, you know, whatever. Or you know what? Call us too. We just want to make sure people can come. So if it's easier to give us a call, we'll do that too. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning, Kathy. Oh, thanks for having me, Maddie. I hope you have a very happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. You too. Make sure to go visit the West Bloomfield Township Public Library and go check out those book recommendations and book collections that they have um, there. And if you don't already have a library card, you can obviously go call or register online to get that library card and get those books before the holiday season. We're going to head into a quick break, but right after we're going to check in with the Yoga 6 Studio and their trainer, Julia Verbeek, about her Create Your Own Narrative Workshop and her career there at Yoga 6. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. What about those barbecues you plan in detail for your family? 
or your daughter's first costume party. It was out of this world. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Prepare an emergency kit and make a family communications plan. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. In the face of COVID-19, staying healthy is important. And now the same is true as we face the flu. Influenza has the potential to infect millions, putting lives and the healthcare system at risk. Fortunately, it's easy to protect yourself. The flu vaccine is safe and effective, and with COVID-19 still spreading, it's essential. To see how you can hit this virus head on, visit michigan.gov slash flu. Let the holiday stress slip away at the local yoga studio right here in West Bloomfield. Yoga 6 is located off 14 Mile Road and is a perfect getaway to relieve your stress while moving your body. Yoga instructor Julia Verbeek gave us an inside look into why she started practicing yoga and allowed us to experience her Create Your Own Narrative workshop at Yoga 6. Um, an add-on indeed, um, but then I talked to Yanni, our lead teacher, and I just, I really got good vibes from her, um, came to take classes at the studio and really loved it, um, so, you know, it's just super interesting um, and happy to find a job also, because during the pandemic, you know, with everything being closed, um, it was really nice to find a place that was reopened and, yeah. So here I teach Restore and I teach a slow flow class. So Restore is, um, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's great for um, restoring the body. So we do a lot of deep stretching. Uh, it's a slow class, uh, great for um, just slowing down, winding down. Um, and then I teach Slow Flow, which is um, just slow movement. We hold poses a little bit longer, really dig deep into the pose, um, but it is a little bit more active of a class. Yoga is something that anyone can practice. Whether you're a newbie or a seasoned yogi, Yoga 6 has a class for you. With instructors guiding you through each movement and meditation, the unity that Yoga 6 creates inside and outside the studio makes it stand out among the rest. I love Yoga 6 because we're different than other studios in that um, every class is fully led and fully demonstrated. Um, so it's great for beginners, even maybe the more challenging end of classes, um, newer people can feel comfortable taking because we never leave them high and dry. Uh, the teacher is always demonstrating, always talking them through the movements. Uh, we have six class formats that, again, are great for beginners, um, even if it is a challenging class. So I love that you can step into the studio and feel comfortable in every class and feel supported by your uh, teacher. I hear so much that people aren't flexible so they can't do yoga um, and that's like the biggest misconception. Uh, you don't need to be flexible to do yoga. I actually started yoga after a car accident so I wouldn't have considered myself flexible. Um, so I think yoga is great for injury recovery as well, um, for strength building, but you don't need the flexibility. That comes with time. So that's the reason that you're here is to become more flexible and to become stronger. Um, so don't let that be the reason that you don't come. Um, let it be the reason you do come. Center, close the eyes again, come back to your breath. Come back to this moment. Try the variety of different classes that they have at Yoga 6 to sweat it out with your tribe. Reporting for The Splash, I'm Maddie Mustion. Wondering what to say to someone who's been sexually assaulted or abused? I believe you. I'm so sorry this happened. It's not your fault. 
Confidential and anonymous help is available at the Michigan Sexual Assault Hotline. Connect with us 24-7. Call 855-VOICES-4 or text 1-866-238-1454 for help. Learn more at michigan.gov slash voices4. And now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm Maddie Mushin. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Make sure you go check out Yoga 6 and you can go register for their classes if you go to yoga6.com slash location slash West Bloomfield to make sure that you're getting on the West Bloomfield page and not one of their other studios here in Michigan. They have some great classes, obviously a variety of classes there. We are happy to be joined by Steve Otto. He is a singer songwriter that has been a resident in West Bloomfield for 20 years and he now manages a technology consulting company called Sosa's Consulting Group. Steve, thanks so much for for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So let's talk a little bit about the music industry right now. Obviously, a lot of new yeah. albums coming out. Um, Adele just dropped an album. Taylor Swift just dropped an album. I'm curious, yeah. what does the impact of a re-record like Taylor Swift did to the min music industry, does that is that changing anything right now? Or give us maybe a little bit of an update of where you think the music industry is right now. Yeah, it's it's really an interesting time. I, I think right now, any kind of art that you make, whether it's music or anything else, this is just the golden age, you know. Um, you know, 20 years ago, to be on TV or to be singing a song or to be in a movie or whatever, there were so many gatekeepers, you know, and now everything is like decentralized and democratized and permissionless. You don't need anyone's permission to just go record an album and put it out there, you know? Um, so I think uh, the biggest thing that's changed in the industry that I've seen is, uh, you know, for, for hundreds of years, thousands of years, for as long as music's been created, it was bought and sold. And then everyone who worked on that music from the writer to the publisher to the composer to the artist that sang or played piano or whatever they did, they got paid based on something being sold. And, you know, when iTunes kind of turned the music industry on its head back in early 2000 by saying, hey, you can download something that was thought to be a big deal. Um, but I think what people don't realize is the bigger deal happened more recently, which is um, streaming. Because up until then, even when you download a song, you're still paying, you know, iTunes or whoever, 99 cents, and then you own a song that's yours to do what you want with. And so, again, everyone in the music industry got paid because someone bought a thing. Well, now we're streaming everything, right? We're streaming, you know, Netflix and Hulu and Amazon and music from everywhere. Um, and so, you know, this is still, obviously it's been controversial, right? The last few years, because how do you, how do you pay everybody when nobody's buying anything, right? They're just kind of borrowing, they're streaming it from a platform. So it's just, it's changed so much. Um, and, you know, like a lot of people in the music business, I make a majority of my money on Spotify and Spotify famously pays a very small portion of a penny every time you stream my song. So it's not really until you get into the millions that you start um, actually making some money on it. So God, the industry's changed so much, you know. And then your music has been sold and streamed over 50 million times. So you are very um, successful in the music industry there as well as on the business side in consulting. Do you have any advice for either someone who is new, a young professional, looking to mm -hmm. get into the music industry or any industry really in that matter? Yeah, for sure. I think, um, you know, like I said, it's it's the golden age for creators. And I think because we don't need any gatekeepers and we can just try things and do things, my best advice for young people, this doesn't have to be, you know, involving music or the arts or anything, but I think it's just if you're interested in something, if you're passionate about something, if you want to learn something, just go do it. You don't even need to go to college to learn how to code, right? You could just create an app because you're interested in it. You can go learn how to create an app for free. You can go build it for your neighbor's business or for a, you know, a local charity. So, you know, that's what's great about right now is you don't need permission. You don't need a bunch of money. You can just do the things that you're interested in. 
And I think overall, in terms of a career, it doesn't matter what we do or what we sell, whether we're an employee or self-employed or an artist, the ability really to make money, to earn an income, is really predicated on having skills that are rare and valuable. So whatever it is that you're interested in, uh, you'll make more money if what you're interested in isn't as uh, prevalent, right, in the market, just supply and demand. Um, and as long as you're doing something of value, right, then uh, then you can stack skills on top of one another and be the only one that does this and has the skill, right? So I, I think just like follow your passion and follow your skills, but then actually do something with them and try things. You get to iterate now almost for free, which is fairly new in human history. Yeah, and then you talked about those skills that are rare and valuable. You mm -hmm. learn Japanese, um, and are you, <laughs> or I believe that you're fluent now in Japanese. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about um, that process of learning a new language? And then do you think it's valuable for someone either in business, in consulting, or even in the music industry to learn a new language? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, actually, I combined those both. I was on a Japanese TV show that's kind of their version of American Idol um, that's been on for, you know, 40 years and has tens of millions of viewers and uh, sang a couple songs in Japanese, so that was fun. But uh, I started learning Japanese when I was in high school and uh, just continued it in college and was a translator and interpreter and, and got into business. And I think, you know, even though we're some years away from not really needing to speak a different language because whenever the technology improves enough i'm just going to say something in english and then it's going to translate into portuguese and you're going to hear me in portuguese i don't know when that day is coming but i think even before that it's just hugely valuable as a human because one it exercises this other cognitive ability that is the, the language portion. And it also, it gives you so much perspective to understand another language. I mean, first of all, if English isn't someone's first language, it's anything that's not your first language, it's really hard to articulate all of your thoughts well. Um, so if you can understand another person's language, you really get to know that culture and each person much better. And there's also concepts that we don't think of if we only speak one language, because uh, as soon as you learn these concepts and you hear them and they're kind of attached to the culture and someone says, what does that mean in English? And you actually have to think, like, I don't think there's a word for that. So you have this perspective almost that other people wouldn't have that only speak one language. So I think it's really important endeavor. And with the holiday season coming up, Steve, I don't know if you're doing any songwriting or singing um, with any special events, but would you tell us a little bit about what you're up to and if singing is part of those plans for the holidays? Yeah, for sure. I Because of the pandemic the last uh, year and a half, I haven't done very much live singing. I did a live uh, remote concert last year. That was a lot of fun. But um, but I don't have any plans to do any performing. Um, you know, as it is today, Michigan is the worst in the country still with COVID. So I'm, I'm being a little careful to, to not be in crowds and stuff. Um, but I do have a Christmas album that's been out for a few years. And I always donate all of the money that comes in to feed the needy in the area. So anyone that goes on Spotify or wherever you listen to music and go to the Steve Acho Christmas album, just know that if you stream that or download it or whatever you do, that that money is going to feed people. Um, I wrote a silly song last year called Quarantini Christmas that got a lot of attention. And I was on a couple of TV channels uh, just because it was silly. And I think people still need that. So um, probably do another push of that song because we seem to be back in the same kind of quarantine position that we were a year ago. So I think it's still relevant. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us this morning, Steve. Thanks for having me. Make sure to go check out Steve Acho's songs on Spotify or anywhere that you go get your streaming music. And we will check in with him in uh, a few couple weeks after the holiday season. Thank you so much for joining us. We won't be here the rest of the week with the holiday season coming up. Um, but you can always watch our shows online uh, and on demand in that live section. If you go to the on demand section on our website there at civiccentertv.com. And next week we will be live from 930 until 10 o'clock on at t Channel 99 and Comcast Channel 15, as well as on our social media pages for Facebook at Civic 
Center TV 15 and the rest of them at Civic Center TV. For all of those in Kego Harbor, Orchard Lake, Sylvan Lake, and West Bloomfield, thank you so much for tuning in this morning and watching The Splash.